All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Vanguard Astrodynamics Kinetic Penetrators, quite the name, huh? Which is being made by forum user Randazzo, who you may remember from the engine pack that we looked at in the previous episode. Now this one, though, rather than adding in a nice little selection of engines, this particular mod has the intent of adding into the game a new kind of science probe which is designed to essentially crash land onto a celestial body to then go and do glorious science. And this isn't some made up harebrained idea either. This is actually based off of a real world design created by a team of researchers. But that is enough of that. Let's head into the VAB and actually take a look at what all this mod has to offer us. Now, before we start though, I do want to point out two things. Uh, the first of which being this mod is very, very much still in development, so whenever you go to give this mod a try, it may be completely different. And normally I don't like to look at things that are that subject to change, but I, when I saw this on the forums, I just had to take a look, because the whole idea of this mod just intrigued the ever-living crap out of me. So we're looking at it. Now the second thing I want to point out is a dependency. This mod requires the Kerbal Attachment System to be installed. Uh, it uses the Harpoon module from the Kerbal Attachment System uh, for its method of attaching itself into the ground. Uh, that's basically how it survives crash landing. Uh, we'll get into more of that in a little bit. So for now, let us just go down to the Science tab and grab the Kinetic Penetrator main part, which is quite the cool little rocket. A very nice little sleeve design not exactly the most intriguing of model but I mean it's it's meant to crash into a planet it doesn't exactly need to be beautiful but it is actually quite nice I do like that there are some nice little detailings in the model as well as of course the texturing the nice little battery part there nice little hatch etc very cool very cool indeed I, I do enjoy this little thing now for a size comparison let's grab a mark 1 command pod real quick and you'll see that this thing is extraordinarily thin in fact, it has a diameter of 0.3125, so it's quite long, but quite thin as well. Uh, but then it is, well, that's for serving the purpose of crashing into a planet. It's basically a giant lawn dart. It's good fun, good fun. But if we head back to the science tab and actually take a look at everything that's installed in this thing, and this is where this mod shines. This kinetic penetrator is not just a unmanned command pod, it also is a data transmitter. It has a built-in little antenna, I believe, actually. Let's uh, extend that real quick. There we go. Oh, yep, there it is. Tiny, tiny tiny little antenna at the bottom right here comes out there and if you uh, retract it back up come, come on come on oh no I'm starting retracted wrong button there we go I actually properly did it now <laughs> uh, this button does nothing in here this is uh basically the harpoon bit which again we'll get on to in a bit once we actually send this baby out to test now beyond the little data transmitter it also does have a built-in generator the cast module harpoon which again is how it attaches into the surface it then has it's technically uh, technically the cone of this thing is a landing leg that's how it deals with impact tolerance but there is no actual landing leg that deploys from this thing uh, it does also have its own reaction wheel SAS and as for science equipment it has both a seismic sensor as well as a temperature sensor so it just has two experiments for the time being hopefully more will be added in the future and of course at the very end an electrical charge of 400 now how you actually Actually move this baby around you have to go into fuel tanks and we have a KP tank here which has its own built-in decoupler and stores a 90 mono propellant which is the fuel of uh, you know that this particular vehicle requires uh, the mod maker decided on mono propellant because of the size the, the kinetic penetrator is just so small that 
doing something like liquid fuel and oxidizers seemed a bit strange. So just the singular liquid uh, monopropellant in there and you are good to go. And as for engines, we then have this little KP engine, which uh, produces 26 atmospheric thrust, 40 vacuum thrust, ISP of 180 atmosphere, 270 vacuum, and uh, uses a 3.7 monopropellant per second. A very nice little engine, quite a convenient little thing. Again, not exactly the greatest of modeling, but not horrible either. The texturing on it's all quite nice though. The whole thing seems quite stock alike, which I always enjoy. So quite good, quite good. Perhaps a little bit more work on the texturing, but again, still in development. I enjoy the whole thing though. And actually the texturing on these things has changed since its uh, initial release. This monopropellant tank I believe used to be this kind of horrible orange color, which kind of makes sense considering, you know, the other RCS fuel tanks that hold monopropellant have the orangey yellow here, uh, but they changed it to a just solid similar color to the rest of it, which I quite prefer. And then the last part is in aerodynamics. This also comes with its own downsized version of the air brake, because of course the normal air brake is freaking huge. It wouldn't exactly fit very nicely on this tiny little probe. So the mod maker has created a downsized version of it, which you can see here. There we go. Just a very, very small little aero brake. Very cool indeed. I quite like the addition of this tiny little thing because it makes small probes a bit more viable because parachutes are kind of a pain for small probes. So having these air brakes is quite cool. Now I put together a basically what we just created there, but uh, you know, with properly aligned air brakes into this little kinetic penetrator, which we will now go and test on the launch pad and show off, well, basically how this thing all works. Now, for the actual engine, it, it's actually a pretty good little engine when used with this kinetic penetrator, because it's not exactly the largest or heaviest of objects. I'm actually gonna extend the air brakes now, because they do have pitch and yaw, so they help with control of the craft. Uh, but yes, let's go to launch this baby in uh, about three, two, one, and monopropellant go. Excellent, there we go. We'll just fly upwards for a bit. Let's look at our fuel. Burning fuel off at a pretty consistent rate there. Then what I wanna do is angle a bit that way. So we move away from the launch pad. And I actually think that is good. Yes, let's just cut the engine and we'll separate the monopropellant section away. Angle ourselves downward. Oh, come on, monopropellant tank. There you go. You go and explode on the ground now as this falls to the earth. Now, again, as I said, the cone of this is essentially a lander leg to absorb all that impact. And at the point of impact, when this hits the ground, it automatically fires that Cass Harpoon module that I mentioned earlier. And as long as you are going between 200 to 300 meters per second, no more than that, this thing should go well. Now, if you are at speeds of over 100 meters per second, it'll probably bounce. Anything under 100 meters per second, it should just hit right into the ground, which lets uh, listen for the thud. I love the sound. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I love that sound. It's just this nice little thud. It's great. But there we go. We are now well embedded into the soil, and that is the point of this little science probe. Now what we can do is zoom in and extend our tiny little antenna. There we go. <laughs> oh, I love that thing. And of course, we can toggle the display of both the seismic sensor as well as the temperature sensor and can also log the data. So we can log the seismic data there, blah, blah, blah. And also we can log the temperature data, blah, blah, blah. Very good indeed. And of course, you can then go and, oh God, where's the button? Where's the button? There it is, transmit data. And we can send all of that back to, uh, well, right over there. <laughs> Someone really could have walked out to get the data, but you know what, eh, we're testing systems. And yeah, that's 
That's basically how this works. You launch it, it goes thud into the ground, and you're good to go. Now, once this thing transmits, there we go, we are done, and it transmitted both the seismic data and the temperature data, and you'll notice that in one charge, it's good to go for both of those. And it, again, it does have its own power supply, so it will recharge over time, which personally, I actually don't like that. I, I think it should just be a battery, maybe make the battery a bit bigger, uh, because, well, what's the point of it recharging now? This is a one-time use deal. We're stuck in the freaking ground. <laughs> Now, technically, we actually aren't stuck in the ground. If I uh, bring back in the air brake so that we can fall sideways and we hit detach, again, remember, this is using that Kerbal Attachment System Harpoon module. So if we detach the quote-unquote harpoon, we can actually wiggle ourselves out of the ground. <laughs> there we go. So I guess technically you could then roll this thing to another destination to uh, take more scientific data, but I don't see why you would do that. That would just take way too much freaking time. But hey, if you have no life, I guess that is a possibility of something you could do. But <laughs> personally, I see this thing as a one-use device, and that's really the sort of real-world application. This thing's meant to crash into a planet somewhere, collect all the data that it can from that one point, and, you know, then that's that. But yes, that is, well, Connect Penetrator. Actually, before we leave, I was just gonna end the video there. Let's drop one of these from space. Now I can, of course, use the uh, Hyper Edit mod to get us into space. And I tested this out earlier. Let's see if we can do this correctly. Uh, I, I kind of crashed in the mountains and we were going about 220-ish meters per second, so it bounced really, really high and didn't end very well for the probe at all. So let's try this again. So let's go up to 100,000. Turn on our SAS, go to our retrograde point. And, oh boy, we are not over any land whatsoever. <laughs> okay, okay, well, what we're going to do... Let's accelerate time until we are over land. Oh god, it's, we need daytime too. Let's kind of go around the planet a bit. Here we go, here we go. I can't go any faster than this. Uh, see, last time I did hyper edit, we were like right over the continent here, but we started over the ocean this time. So let's just get around to the desert, which actually I think will be a better place for us to land anyways. So that should be good. And there we go. And let's make sure we're still on our retrograde point. Excellent. And let's throttle up the monopropellant engine and burn. There we go. And this baby, even though it's not exactly the biggest or most powerful engine, for this tiny little probe, it more than does the job. As you can see, we've already gone from that 100,000 meter orbit to this thing. Well, being good to go. I'm going to wait for it to burn out entirely of its fuel. Oh, wow. We've still got 15 left. Oh, God. I'm going to be in the mountains again. <laughs> I should have stopped when we were just over the desert. This could go very poorly for me. Okay. Well, let's, let's go back to the map then. And release that monopropellant tank. We no longer need you. And I'm just going to go ahead and retract the air brakes, which I probably should have added to an action group. And accelerate time. Here we go. And we're back to 1x. Lovely, lovely. All right, let's go to our prograde point. There we go. Beautiful. And we're going to... Yes, 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 I know. It's. Don't show me this again. There we go. Let's bring it up to the 4x. Oh, look at it shake. It is so oh, actually still gaining speed. It should be slowing down. That's probably because of the 4x thing. Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go. It's slowing itself down now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Doing quite a nice job. These little air brakes are just glorious. I know that technically they're supposed to be facing the other way, but aesthetically, I prefer them to be facing this way. And they still do the job just as well. So, I like it. I like it. Oh, actually, these mountains aren't too bad. We should be perfectly fine. Because, yeah, in the, uh, when I was testing this from orbit, we crash landed into these mountains here, and I landed right on the side of that mountain. We then bounced 
a good maybe 100 or 150 meters down into the valley and exploded. So <laughs> you gotta watch that bounce. It's, it's not good. We should actually be slowed down quite nicely for this one, though. Let's accelerate time a little bit more. Nope, oh, there goes the mono monopropellant tank. And once we get down into the uh, light blue, I think is when we'll put it back to 1x time. And just imagine the potential uses for these. You could send up a, you know, ship to Duna or one of the other planets in the solar system with like 50 of these damn things attached and just launch them down into every possible biome on the planet and just do a mass data collection. It would be gorgeous. That's actually what I plan to do down the road at some point when I get the time for myself, because I'd love to give that a try. Be like just a cluster bomb of science probes. It'd be beautiful. Uh, but of course, you could also use it as we're doing now to go and scatter them around the uh, planet of Kerbin to collect all the biome data here or anywhere else you so desire. And yeah, just a fun, fun little thing. They're small little science probes that could easily be, easily be bundled together for your amusement, which is just glorious. And who doesn't love having some new science equipment lying around? So let's, all right, we're almost good there. We're actually coming down real slow, so this will be a perfect landing. Let's wait for the thud and, oh, oh, we still bounced, oh my. There we go, but we bounced into a proper harpooning. So that was interesting. I've never bounced so far below 100 meters per second. I think it's because of the angle. If you hit flat ground, you should be good. But on any of this angled terrain, that that's whenever I've bounced. So that is, that is something definitely to remember. And of course we can extend our little antenna. Look at that little thing. I just, it's so tiny, but it works, it works, it works. And who wouldn't love this? But yes, this has been the Vanguard Astrodynamics Kinetic Penetrator. And if you would like to give this a go for yourself, which I would definitely say to go and give it a try, because it is just a fun little bit of scientific equipment, then you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. And I do hope that you enjoy giving it a go. And of course, I hope you have enjoyed this episode and that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching my friends, and as always, have a good one!